Hello everyone, how are you guys doing? Hopefully everyone's having a great weekend and uh, welcome to today's uh, video. This is going to be a very special video. I've been wanting to record this um, at the beginning of the of the week. I was I was thinking about uh, how to properly present all of this content that I'm about to show you. As you saw in the title, we're going to be talking about the rendering layers. And this is a relatively advanced concept, I would say. Like it's not something that you usually hear about when you're learning 3D. I wouldn't say it's super complicated, but it's definitely one of those those things that you see later on in your career. So uh, I'm going to be showing you what render layers are and how powerful they can be in creating very, very cool compositions. So let's go. As you probably saw, we have a little bit of a different setup. I brought back my uh, standing desk so that I can switch between sitting and standing and I changed the camera position. So uh, just a little bit different. I also tried to place the microphone in a more comfortable uh, position so that we have a better sound because I think I I, I heard that it was uh, looking or sounding a little bit too far away. So hopefully this is good. Let me know in the comments as well. And uh, yeah, so here we go. This is the scene that uh, one of the scenes that we worked on the one of the latest courses that we released, which is the uh, cinematic lightning course uh, for Maya. Uh, but you can do this rendering layer, rendering layer things with any scene that you want. I just think this is going to be really, really good. And it's also going to allow me to answer one of the questions from our audience, which is how can you remove the fog from a render and uh, later on comp it in, in Photoshop? or in any sort of uh, image processing software. So what are rendering layers? Well, first of all, we need to understand that uh, whenever we render something, I'm gonna render this scene real quick, which by the way, uh, the audio, um, I used to be able to record while rendering and then lately I've been having some issues where it kind of like freaks out. Hopefully it doesn't happen here. Um, but I'm gonna try to just like, uh, whenever I hit render, I'm just gonna pause real quick, let it render and then I'll show you. There we go. So the render still has a couple of uh, minutes left for it to finish, but this is uh, this is the scene. This is what uh, what we've, we're going to be working with. And the, the reason why I like this scene uh, to show you how all of these rendering layers work is because we have a lot of things going on, right? So if we were to take a look at the alpha channel right now, this is something really interesting. As you can see on the alpha channel, we only have the character and the environment like uh, actually being calculated, right? And there's nothing here in this empty space. However, if we were to turn off the alpha channel, you're gonna see that we actually do have information. There is fog information all over this place. Now, uh, before I move on, one thing that I do wanna mention about the, the um, Arnold AI atmospheric uh, for fog that we're using, which by the way, can be activated over here under the Arnold renderer environment, AI atmosphere volume. This volume is a global volume that gets placed on top of everything, but it will only work with a direct light sources, okay? So only for the lights, like all of these lights that I have here in the scene, only those lights will work for the um, environment fog. So the HDRI, the, the um, uh, image-based lighting, it's not gonna affect everything. If I were to turn all of the lights off, then it will pretty much be like, uh, it, it wouldn't have any fog. We wouldn't be able to see the fog. So the only reason why we're seeing the fog again is because uh, these are um, like actual lights that we have on the scene. So here's where render layers come into play. Render layers are a way in which we can like remove all of this. The best example I can give you guys when talking about render layers is think about like an onion, right? An onion is made out of several layers. And if you peel all of the layers off, you're going to have all of the different pieces of the onion. Well, that's what a renderer does. A renderer will calculate a lot of different things. Any render, it could be Marmoset, Unreal, whatever. Um, any render will calculate the diffuse information, the transmission information, the reflections, the refractions, like every single thing it's calculated on the render. And then it combines every everything into your beauty, beauty render, which is this thing that we're seeing right here, which is, as you can see right here, okay? Now, from here, we can split our image into two different kinds of comps. The first comp is what we're gonna do, which is a render layer comp, where we're gonna split this thing into different layers, and then inside of Photoshop, we're gonna bring all of the layers back together. But there's one other comp uh, that uh, can, be, uh, can be used, and let me show you real quick. So, I'm not sure if you guys remember, but all oh, in the in the old timey days of Disney, uh, 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 like cartoon creation, they they used to do this um, thing where they would take a a camera and they would create plates like this, right? So whenever they would animate their, their characters, they would create plates. And the reason why that was so useful is because they could render, they could work faster by only animating 
some parts of the plates and leaving the background on the on the bottom part. I remember when my uh, when my brothers and I were, were smaller or, or younger, younger is the proper word, uh, we would watch a lot of uh, Tom and Jerry, right? Some of you might have... Uh, might know about this guys right here and uh, one of the funny things about the old cartoon and old cartoons in general is anytime you saw the old cartoons the the backgrounds of the scene would be like more nicely rendered nice shadows nice everything and the characters would be very flat so it was very obvious what parts of the frame was going to move because it was shaded or, or looked different right well that's pretty much what we're about to do we're going to be splitting our images into different parts of the slide and then we can combine those slides together but i do want to mention the other part which i am not super i know how to get the layers but i don't really know how to properly comp them uh this is something that a lot of uh, the people that work in post-production do which are called aobs or Ar arbitrary output va variables or values variables so aovs and working in this sort of aov way is another way in which you can uh, work uh, when talking about comp and what this uh, like process will create for you is you will be able to extract all of the information that the scene has in different layers that you can later recombine in the specific ways to recreate the original image that you had. So this is probably the best example that I can show you. This is the beauty render. This is the render that you would normally see, like what we have in Maya right now. And uh, if we divide this into different uh, layers, we can have the transmission layer, the direct specular, the direct uh, indirect specular, diffuse direct specular shader, and direct. If we grab all of these layers, the ones that are like the layers of that onion, and we combine them back, we're going to be able to recreate the beauty render. Now, why is this important? Why is this something that uh, is useful? Well, for big productions, one of the, the most difficult things is changes, right? Like imagine a client says, hey, we saw the render, but we don't want the glass to be as shiny. It's Everything's too shiny. We want things to be a lot more like flat. Well, we don't want to re-render everything. So if you properly set up this process from the get-go and then you uh, rebuild your render in a different software such as Nuke or DaVinci or stuff like that, what's going to happen is you're going to be able to tweak individual channels of the elements without affecting the, the other parts of the render. And that will allow you to, well, color correct, do changes, um, decrease the specularity, increase it, change the hues of a specific objects. There's so much powerful thing that you can do. Again, that's not my, my area of expertise, so I really don't know how to get the most of using this process. But I know that it's a super, super powerful process. If that's something that you guys want to learn more about, uh, again, just check out or try to look for more information about arbitrary output variables. It's super easy to get them uh, or to extract them, if you wish. If you go here to the AOVs, which is that, arbitrary output variables, here are all of the different channels that we can extract from the um, from the world, okay? And, and again, all of these channels can be exported into individual images and then recomp together. And by recomping them or re uh, like joining them, you're gonna be able to get the exact same image that you uh, that you want. So yeah, that's uh, again. Those are like I, I like to divide like the rendering post production side of things into those two elements, like the complete like super intense. Um, like layering of all of the different channels that you need for an image and just like uh, like turning on and off different parts or layers of the image itself which by the way you can combine you could have a full reconstruction with the layers with the aovs for your foreground midground and background tweak things in different ways and then recombine everything which again gives you a lot of flexibility but in my particular case here for instance in the studio that's not a workflow that we use that much that much because clients usually have a really clean clear idea of what they want so we don't need to do a lot of recomping so yeah <laughs> getting that out of the way now i know that was a lot of theory but it was very important for me to make sure that you guys understand what we're about to do let's talk about render layers so the way render layers work is right here in this little button over here, which is uh, render setup. And uh, this is where the like the fun begins. This render setup window that we have right here shows us what we currently have on our scene. And as you can see, right now we just have our scene, it's visible, and it's set as a master layer so that when we batch render, it will render whatever we're seeing. Simple as that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to create a new render layer. And I'm going to call this foreground. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to create something called a collection, which, as the name implies, is just a group of whatever things that we want. You can even see that it has this transform node, which is pretty much, again, just like a group. So this one I'm going to call objects. 
And what I can do is I can go into my scene, take a look at it and say, okay, what things do I want there to be on the foreground? Well, I definitely want this big rock, this guy, this guy, this guy, the water, and this guy. If we go to our shotgun real quick, like those are the things that we're pretty much gonna be seeing on the on the foreground, right? Like all of these pieces. We can also grab the character, of course. I'm just gonna grab the whole character, not this one. Uh, and he is using a lifesaver, so I'm gonna use, I'm gonna select the, the shape of the lightsaber right there, that uh, sort of like a, um, what's the word? Uh, light, that's a mesh light that we're using. And I'm just gonna middle mouse, drag and drop them into this option right here. So now all of the things that I selected are now here inside this uh, element. And what we can do is we can turn on the visibility. And as you can see, only the things that are visible in this foreground layer are now visible here. If we go now to the options right here to the render, and if we try to render, what we should be seeing um, as soon as this thing renders is we're going to see only the objects that we selected. So all of the objects that live inside that collection will be shown here. Let me pause real quick and I'll show you the result. There we go. Again, I'm not going to let the, the render finish all the way uh, just to like speed things up a little bit more. I'm just going to stop it right here. You can see that things are rendering. And yes, we still need to let this thing like properly render to see the whole thing. But as you can see, it's pretty much the same image that we had before. We're going to be saving some of this ones now so that we can see. It's pretty much the same image, but with the difference that in this case, we don't have any of the background information. So in this case, there's just a couple of things. You can even see that they disappear here in, inside of Maya. So if we go back to the initial one, we're getting rid of some of like this cliffs back here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call this a background. In this case, we're just going to have two like sets of layers right here. We're going to call this background and I'm going to grab some of these objects right here, like all of these ones. Uh, yeah. And I'm just going to, again, uh, right click, create a collection. Let's call this objects. And uh, we can just call this, let's rename this objects BG background. And again, middle mouse and drag them here so that we can have them right there. So if we were to turn this on, as you can see, this is what we're going to see on the on the render layer. We're missing the C, of course, but from the perspective of the camera, we don't really need it. And um, again, if I were to render this, let's try this real quick. Uh, what we're going to see is just like the, there we go, the light information, as you can see, and the, actually, I'm doing it from a different camera, but yeah, it will be like the light information and just the cliffs that we have right there. So let's go back to our shot cam, panels, looks selected, there we go. Let's try rendering that again. And there we go. Now, as you can see, we do have some information here uh, from the light, which is something that we might not want, right? And uh, this is where we're going to be, or we need to be very, very careful about what we see and what we don't see. As you can see, the problem here is that even though this object lives right there, uh, which is the cylinder, we actually select it. When, when I select this thing, I'm not selecting the cylinder, I'm selecting the light. And the, the render layers usually work with objects and not so much with uh, with lights. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the cylinder. And I'm going to go to this one right here and middle mouse drag and drop to make sure it's there. And then over here, we can go here and just check where this uh, P cylinder is, if it is there. And if it's not there, we just can hit, uh, we can try and hit remove. Doo -doo 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 -doo. If not, there's another thing that we can do. I'll show you in just a second. Uh, but let me try that real quick. I think, I think that should be it. No, we are seeing it though. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I'll show you how we can fix that in, in just a second. So uh, we now have our layers, right? We have our background layer and then we have our front layer. Now what we need to do is we need to create one layer for the fog because the fog is a like global thing that happens inside of Arnold at the end of the rendering process. That's why we can't, we don't have this on the alpha channel. Even here you can see that the alpha channel is not really following the fog even though there's a lot of like RGB information in this area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new layer and this one's gonna be called fog. And I'm gonna, um, and in this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna grab everything. So let's go back to our main layer. Let's create a new collection. It's gonna be called Fog Objects. And I wanna grab every single object. So in this case, I'm just gonna say select all by type geometry and all the geometry, except for the background, of course, just like the ones that are visible, this one's right here. We are gonna add them, middle mass and drag them here, okay? 
So right now, if I were to render this, it's going to look pretty much the same as the beauty render because it's all of the geometry that's uh, on the on the scene. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create something called an overwrite. And this is where the magic starts to happen, because what, what we can do with the layers, we can tell the layers to do different things whenever we're working with these sort of elements. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click um, this collection and I'm going to select this option right here that says create material overwrite. And what this will do, I'm going to call this a surface material. What this will do is it will apply one material to all of the objects that I have selected without deleting the original materials that we had. So if we go back to the original scene over here, everything's exactly the same. But we have a layer that replaces the materials that the objects have with a new material. And in this case, this new material that I'm going to be uh, comping in this case or using is just a very super basic Maya surface shader. The surface shader is just a material that does not respond to light. It's a flat color. In this case, it's a flat black color. And now if I go to my render view, let's go here and we uh, render, Arnold oh, render, when, oh, uh, well, I made a mistake there. Let's stop this. Uh, let's vi make this thing visible. There we go. And if we render, what I should see now is all of the objects that we normally have in our scene, but they now will be completely black. They're just going to be silhouettes, but we're still going to have the fog. So that's exactly what I'm going for. There we go. Look at this. So this is pretty much, as you can see, the fog. We have extracted the fog into a single RGB layer that we can later use. If we grab this layer and we just place it on top of the image that we're going to be comping and we use some of the blending modes that we have inside of uh, Photoshop to get rid of all of the black colors, we're only going to be left with the uh, fog color. So this right here, my friends, is how you split a fog layer from the rest of the layers. Okay, This is uh, what's going to allow us to to extract all of this information. And then if we want, we can even add like a different thing uh, on the background, like a like a background, right? Like a like a sky or something. So there we go. That's a that's a good uh, this is a good uh, result right now. This is what I'm going for. But now we need to talk about the lightsaber, right? Because the lightsaber is going to be creating some issues. I know that the lightsaber at the end of the day, this is all I want. Like I know that if I just add this fog layer on top of everything else, this already has the light information. But that's not true, because if we were to go um, to the options right here, to, to this one right here, to the background options, if we turn this on, or sorry, not the background, the foreground, and if I try to render this, we're going to have a problem. Yes, we were able to extract the fog information from the original scene, but the, the original scene or the front layer still has the atmosphere information, and that's not something that we want. Right. Like I, I now, since I now have split the, the fog from everything else, I would not like to have this particular shot without fog. Can we do that? Yes. How? With overrides. Overrides are going to be the secret for all of these things. So I'm going to go to my atmosphere over here, atmosphere volume. And if we go, by the way, on, on this thing, make sure that we are on the foreground right now. We're not on the master layer. We're in the foreground. And what I'm going to do is I am going to actually uh, you can see that the number is 0 0.001. I'm going to bring the fog down to zero. OK, so my fog is now set to zero. If I were to render now, there's not going to be any fog. And this is what I actually want. Like this is the kind of information that I want. We're going to talk about the lightsaber again in, in just a second. But this is the layer that I want because I know that I can place the, the fog now on top inside the Photoshop. I'm going to stop this real quick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the fog scene right here. And on the fog scene and selecting the atmosphere volume, I'm going to right click the density and I'm going to create this thing called create absolute overwrite for visible layer. And once I do that, it creates another controller, as you can see here, that allows me to change how the density of the fog is going to work on that specific layer. That's why render layers are so, so powerful. OK, now this one I'm going to set to 0 0.001. And again, if I go back to the background like here, you're going to see this set to zero. But when I go to the fog right here, it's going to be set to 0 0.001. So I am going to get the fog when I render the fog layer and only there. OK, now we're going to do the same for the lightsaber. I know, again, because we saw it uh, here on the fog, that uh, the lightsaber is working very, very nicely uh, on this specific element. And we know that the lightsaber is coming from this light P cylinder that we have right here, which has an intensity of one, an exposure of 16. That's fine. So what I'm going to do here is, again, I'm going to go to the background or just the master layer even. And on the master layer, I'm going to bring the intensity to zero. So on the master layer, the lightsaber is going to be turned off. So if I were to go to the foreground layer now and render, there's not going to be any light here. 
let's just wait for the render to update. And what should happen here is since we pretty much turn off the light, there's not going to be any light. Now, is that something that we want? Well, it depends because one of the problems that we might have here is that we will have the glow, but the light won't be affecting the character. So this is the, the kind of like back and forth that you need to think about when one object is affecting another object. And um, and well, that, that's important. So I don't want to see the lightsaber here, but I do want to see the uh, reflection that the light hits because it's going to be like uh, affecting my, my character, right? So here's where, again, we need to think about, okay, what channels do we need? Well, again, I do need this. I do need to see the, the lightsaber. If I, if I, I, I want to see this, this light hitting the rocks and the character, but I don't want to see the lightsaber itself because I'm already seeing the lightsaber itself on the, um, what's the word, on the final channel, on the fog channel. And and if we render this channel and then we place the other channel on top, it's gonna look super, super bright. We're gonna be like multiplying the amount of light and we don't want that. So, light visible, this is what we're gonna change. So here on light visible, we're gonna create an absolute overwrite for the visible variable. And what we're gonna do is on uh, this particular channel, we are not gonna have the light visible. So now when I hit render, the light will affect the character, but it will, it will not affect the rest of the elements. We will see the reflections, we will see everything. Now, that's another one. Do we want to see this light on the reflections? Well, yes, because the fog won't uh, give me this light right here. So this is what we want. It's, it's kind of like if the lightsaber was there, but we're not seeing it. But again, we're going to see it. And just so that you guys uh, believe me, I know that uh, you guys do believe me, but just so that we, all, we are all in the same uh, page. When we go to the fog layer, if I render the fog layer, the lightsaber is going to be there. So let's just oh, render. Again, this is the uh, the fog layer, and uh, in the fog layer we should have the fog like uh, visible with the with the rest of the elements, with the rest of the light. So there we go. So once we comp this on top, it's going to look like the side lightsaber was there while still affecting the the rest of the environment the same way we've been uh, seeing it so far. Cool. So again, this is the fog layer. That's fog layer. That's uh, my normal layer, this one right here. So we're gonna comp this uh, fog layer on top of this layer right here. And then we're gonna place the background layer. Let's just give a quick look to the background layer and make sure that we are not missing anything. So let's render the background layer real quick. Okay, so as you can see on the background layer, we also have the lightsaber. That's not something that we want. We only want to see the back like clips and stuff. So again, we're going to go here to the background layer. We're going to go to light visible and we're going to set a create absolute value override. And we're also going to turn it off in just in case, just in case there's a little bit of light affecting other parts of the of the like cliffs. Um, this should keep it. But as you can see, this is this is what we get. And um, we can push this thing. You can see the background right there. All of the information that we have right there. And uh, that's pretty much it. Now we have properly created all of our render layers. We have the foreground layer, the background layer, and the fog layer. The next step, and uh, this is the reason why I, I wanted to wait until I had like enough time to really explain all of this. I know that we're already going over 23 minutes, but uh, uh, think of this as a sort of like a DLC for the cinematic light course. Um, I didn't want to cover this on that course because the course was mainly focused on the lightning part of things. This is a little, has a little bit more to do with comp and, and again with like post-production. But if you guys want to check that one out, make sure to check it uh, in the links down below. Uh, we, it's, it should be available on Skillshare and everywhere. So now we have all of the layers ready and you can see this little icon right here. This is very important, which as you can say, uh, as you can see, uh, it says this as a renderable layer, right? Set layer as non-renderable for batch rendering. Um, we want to keep that, uh, like we want to make sure that all of these things will be renderable. So what this should, I think the, the wording is wrong there because by having this thing on, it's going to render it. I'm not sure why it says it's not going to render it, but it is going to render it. So we're going to go back to common and uh, now we're just going to like export this. So as you can see, I'm going to do EXR. Uh, you can do JPEGs, you can do whatever, that's fine. Um, remember that when we do EXR though, the values of the colors will be a little bit different because we're exporting raw. And uh, when we see the, the images right here, they're color corrected. So we are going to need to color correct. But if you want to, you could actually export this in, in another format. I do recommend doing EXR because it's, it's, it's just a little bit better. Um, I have saw some uh, information where it mentioned that half precision is uh, uh, good as well because it's going to be 16 bits, so it's going to give us a little bit more like working room, but it should be fine. I'm going to keep the same um, name right here, 
And uh, now what we're gonna do is, here you can see all of the layers that we're gonna be rendering. And the secret, the big secret for this uh, rendering that we're gonna do, well, first of all, let's save this before anything bad happens. Let's call this render layers master. There we go. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to my Maya viewport. Make sure that your Arnold viewport is turned off now. We're gonna go to render render sequence and I'm going to click this little option box and here where it says uh, all rendered enabled layers you want to make sure that this is turned on which as you might imagine this will go through all of the four layers and it's going to render so I'm going to hit render sequence and close guys um, it's going to start rendering you will see your renders here on the render view uh, and it will go layer by layer so you're going to have a beautiful render and then you're going to have the three layers uh, rendered as well I'm going to pause real quick wait for the renders to finish properly and I'll see you back on the next part very well guys, so the renders should be gone, but before we continue with the next part, which is the Photoshop comping part, I just want to remind you that we have a very cool promotion with Skillshare, check it out. Hey guys, Abraham here. We upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. There we go. So uh, if you go and navigate to your images folder on the project that you're working on, you're going to find this new layers called background, beauty, fog, foreground, and master layer. So in this case, fog is one of the most important ones. I'm just going to bring it and see how it looks. Uh, I'm just going to hit OK. And there we go. This is our fog layer looking very nice. Let's hit Control O again. Uh, as you can see, it's still 32 bits. Uh, I thought it was going to give me the, the 16 bit, but that's fine. We'll just color correct real quick. Uh, let's go here and we're going to go for the background which is this one right here. And we're gonna go for the uh, foreground. So this one right here. So as you can see, by now having all of the elements inside of Photoshop, we're gonna be able to assemble them kind of like a sandwich, right? So uh, let's start with this one here first. Uh, this is gonna be like the, the layer that I wanna work with. So I'm just gonna double click to unlock this layer. And uh, we're gonna go, let's go for the foreground or the background first. So again, just double click, okay. Just drag this and shift and click here so that it goes in there. And there we go. Now, the problem is that we're missing the alpha channel. Don't worry. We actually have it right here. So on the channels, on the first, on the foreground image, I can just control and click this alpha channel. And as you can see, it's going to perfectly select our character right here. And we can go to the layers and uh, we can say uh, we can mask this one right here. We'll just mask it, and there we go. So we're pretty much comping one on top of the other. There's one thing I noticed, though. Uh, when we hit uh, Control and click on the Alpha channel, as you can see, for instance, right there, the glow that we have right there, it's not really being like captured. Another thing to, to see if that actually works. Oh, no, it's not. I, I thought that information was in the Alpha channel, but it's not. Uh, that's a little bit weird, actually. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, just to, we just uh, Control click this one. And on this layer, we're just going to mask it, and there we go. So now, as you can see, we actually have the stones back there, and there's a lot of amazing things that we can do with this, but I want to like finish the composition first, and then we'll, we'll jump there. So I'm going to bring the final one, which is the fog layer right here. I'm going to hit Control, uh, click here, and bring this one over here. There we go. And uh, now what's going to happen is if we were to grab this layer and change this to something like a linear Dutch ath, voila. We have the exact same composition that we have inside of Maya, but now with everything uh, on. I'm going to bring this back to normal because one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this back to 16 bits. I'm going to say image, mode, and bring this down to 16 bits. I don't want to merge, and uh, that should keep the colors like pretty consistent. They will be a little bit different because, again, when we saw the images in Arnold, they were linearized, so or they were being displayed so that we could see them properly on the monitor. And when we export this um, them as EXRs, they're going to get this sort of like weird color correction, uh, and they might look slightly different, but that's fine. We still have enough color information to, to play around with this ones. Now, again, this one, we're going to set this to a linear Dutch uh, at, or uh, I also like using screen, for instance. Lighten doesn't really work. Screen works quite nice. Uh, you can try it, of course, like you can play around with the ones right here. Screen usually is the one that works the best. Why? Because screen will remove all of the black colors from your scene and it will give you this. 
Now, uh, in the cinematic course, I show you all of the different things that we can do with post-production and stuff. Here, I'm just going to be like very, very, uh, I'm going to keep things like super basic. So let's start going for like a background, for instance. So I'm going to go background. Uh, like, uh, let's call it like a night background space. Something like that might look cool. Like some, some like nebula or stars on the background. Um, let's see, let's see. Like this one. Okay, or oh, this one looks even better. So I'm just gonna, this one looks even better. Actually, like this one, Milky Way. So copy, we go here and we paste. Control B. Control B, there we go. So I want this thing to be on the background, right? On the, be behind the, all of the stones. But if I bring this over here, you're gonna see that, well, we don't see it because this image right here, the, the background, uh, even though we did have a, a an alpha channel over here, we're not copying it, but we can copy it. We can just grab this guy right here, go into layers. Let's uh, copy this one again, and then just grab this whole thing. And we bring it back to the uh, foreground layer. Where is it? There we go. Yes. We delete this one, and there we go. So now we can see the background. Very, very easy. What I'm going to do here, usually the stars are not as exposed. So I'm just going to uh, add like a back, black, uh, background here. And I'm also going to use a little bit of uh, like screen. And just like bring them down, right? So I do want to see a little bit of the stars, but not that many. Something like that. We can even go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and just blur them a little bit. So they're out of focus. There we go. Another thing that we can do, if we want to push these cliffs even like further back without having to go into Maya, we can grab this guy and say, hey, why not filter this one as well? So blur, Gaussian blur, and we just blur them out a little bit more. We could even uh, like lower the, the color or just go into control L to levels and we can play around with the colors, make them a little bit darker. So that they're again, further back, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, there we go. And now it's kind of like we're pushing the mountains back, right? Kind of like faking the fact that they, they are not as close as, uh, as we think they are. Um, again, there's a couple of other things that I did on the master layer for the for the course. I, I don't want to repeat them right here. The video is already <laughs> long enough. I just want to talk about this one. But there's one thing I think um, you guys might uh, like. And this is, again, it's a little bit of an advanced concept, but we can do it. So there's a very nice mask that we can get to change things that you might not think it's possible to change. For instance, what if I told you guys that I don't want this character to be... Um, What's the word? To be blue. Maybe he's red, right? Like, or, or, or pink or something. Well, we can, of course, go here to the layer and create something like an adjustment layer saying hue and saturation, change the hue of the character to something different. And then on the mask right here, we can just like uh, paint a mask and then just a brush and uh, change his color, right? Like that's that's something that uh, if you've ever used any sort of like editing software, you know that's possible. But imagine a composition or a video or an animation where this character is moving all the way or into different places and, and you wanna change the character, character but you don't wanna be painting a mask every single time. Can we do something about that? And the answer is yes. Again, thanks to render layers. So I'm gonna go back to my render layers here. I'm gonna select the character. Let's go to my render layers. I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna call this mask. And this render layer, let's uh, turn it on. Let's go and create a collection. I'm gonna call this objects. In this case, the only object that I want is the character itself. So I'm just gonna drag and drop it right here. So as you can see, it's only the body of the character uh, that we're uh, bringing into this, uh, into this element, right? And what I can do here in this element is I can again create a material overwrite and say I want another surface shader but in this case, I'm just gonna grab like a crazy color, something like a red, okay? So that it's easy to select. Now, if I were to render this, let's go uh, Arnold and render real quick. Technically, what I should see is only a sweat of the character. There we go, it's looking quite nice. Now, of course, uh, the light, as we saw before, we also need to create a, uh, a uh, absolute override and turn off the visibility. We don't want to see any any sort of light. I just want the mask of the character like this. But there's a problem, right? Like, how can I make this so that uh, we we can have the other? I, I would like to have the other objects uh, inside of this layer, like the code and everything else. And maybe I just want the character to have that uh, sort of effect. Can we do that? And uh, I do believe we can do it. I'm actually kind of like free free flowing this thing, but I do believe we can do it. So let's go back to the the scene. Let's grab the whole character. Let's go to the mask. 
with the objects here. So I'm going to bring everything here. And if I do this now, what's going to happen is we're going to get a, a new result, like, like a new material override. And technically, what we should see in just a second is now the whole silhouette of the character. Now, I think in this case, we've been using this a material override that just overwrites everything. But I do believe if my uh, memory from the, the time when I, uh, when I first learned about this is still kind of like fresh, I do believe we can change the materials on this specific layer and they won't affect the other ones. Let's give it a shot. Or, or actually, can we do that? I'm thinking about, I'm, I'm thinking about another option if this doesn't work. Let's try this. So right now we have this material overwrite that's hitting all of these collections, right? So I'm gonna, uh, I'm actually gonna go here. I'm gonna take the Akrok, which is the character itself, and let's remove it. And actually, let's remove this one as well. There we go. So here on the character, this is where all of the elements are. So I'm gonna grab all of these things and just move them here. There we go. And the, uh, and we do have the material overwrite. Now what I'm gonna try here is I'm gonna create a new collection. This is gonna be a character. And on this new collection, this is where we're gonna have the character body, and we're gonna assign a uh, what's the word? A material override as well. We're also gonna use a Maya surface shader, but in this case, we're gonna grab another color like a green, like one of these ones. There we go. So it's kind of like if we were creating an ID map. That's that's pretty much what I'm trying to do. And there we go. Look at that, working exactly as intended. So as you can see, we've just created a mask that has all of the pixels that we need to uh, like uh, like bring the character out. One thing I could do here, and I think this uh, might uh, work a little bit better, is this one. I'm gonna make it white, and then on the material uh, on the other layer, this one right here, I'm gonna make it black. So what's gonna happen? We just created an alpha mask for the uh, body and the reason why i want to do this is because as you can see there's a little bit of a glow uh in the borders of the character uh, I, I don't think it's because of the fog though could it be because of the fog maybe he's just like glowing a little bit maybe it's this lens effect that i'm using uh but the point is that we do want to capture all of those like anti-aliasing and stuff we don't want any like weird uh like faceting or anything happening in this case since this is a, such a simple mask i can just save this image directly so i'm gonna save it on the fog layer just to have it i'm just gonna call this um, alien mask dot exr again the exr is just to make sure that uh, things are a little bit cleaner let's go fog and there's the mask so what i can do here is i can grab this whole mask right here say Control c to copy this information all of this rgb information go back to my uh, element right here or to, the, to the final scene go to, to this hue and saturation, alt and click and say control B. So now this mask is only affecting whatever is uh, like right there. And if I start changing the colors, as you can see, we can change the colors of a character without having to re-render the whole thing. So this is why render layers are so, so cool. But as you saw, the the like the process in the, that we need to follow in order to be able to uh, modify it or, or to change the parameters, it's a little bit lengthy. There's a lot of like divisions and things that you need to do, but it's a super, super cool way to create um, layers, as you saw, that we're gonna be able to play around with and create this sort of compositions. Again, this sort of compositions, compositions only matter when you need to have a lot of control on the post-production side of things. A lot of times here in the studio, the, the kind of like projects that we deliver, as long as the frame looks good on Maya, that, that's what we're delivering and that's fine. Like the client's not looking for something super, super uh, like big budget usually. Uh, but th there you go, these are the tools. So this is sort of like a small masterclass on render layers. Um, it is possible to even like, extract the, the lightsaber, change the color, and do all of this in post-production while affecting the rest of the colors. Like there's, again, a lot of cool things that we can do. Let's let's make him like like a pink character. We can play around with the lightness of the character. We can change this, for instance, change the, the blending mode of the, of the layer so it's, I don't know, something like a soft light so it's not as, as intense. And again, it, it gives us it gives us tools. At the end of the day, that's uh, that's what we're going for. That's what we want to or try to get. We want to have tools that gives us uh, more control over all of the things that we want to do. This one definitely one thing I'm missing here. This one should be down here. There we go, so that we see the fog uh, on top. Let's bring it back to I think normal. Let's go what for like a yellow like plucoon. Careful with the lightness. Lightness shouldn't be modified really. 
what we can play around with the hue maybe even a little bit of the saturation there we go kind of like yoda it's like the yoda, yoda, yoda green uh so yeah there we go guys uh with that done we're, we're pretty much uh, finished with this uh with this little master class about uh render layers hopefully uh to the to the person that was asking how to remove the fog well hopefully with all of this information you're now more prepared to do this uh, a little bit more of an advanced process and that's pretty much it uh, now i'm still trying to figure out if i can do the live stream i know i promise we're gonna have one live stream i'm trying to see if we can have one later today this video is airing on sunday uh early sunday so it's probably gonna be late sunday for our our friends in India and for everyone else is going to be early Sunday uh, and I want to finish the helmet we we haven't worked on that project uh, uh, this whole week so hopefully we'll be able to to do a little bit more so yeah that's it guys thank you very much and uh, I'll see you back on the next one make sure to leave a like share subscribe comment if you like this content uh, I'm happy to always hear your feedback and uh, yeah that's it I'll see you back on the next one bye bye